This was a good one from both Nicole Wallace and Matthew Dowd. Nicole Wallace said, uh, pretty much the Republican Party is dead. It's like dead men walking. You remember that movie, The Sixth Sense, I believe it was called? They didn't quite know they were dead yet, but in fact, they were. This is a perfect instantiation of that. But then Matthew Dowd got a, a bit deeper in explaining exactly what's happening to the Republican Party. I want you to listen to this, and then we'll go ahead and take it on the other side. I think Matt Dowd, and he just articulated better than I could how the Republican Party died. And they may not know they're dead, but, you know, it's like the little boy in the sixth sense. They're walking around, they're dead, they just don't know it. And they died, not because Donald Trump killed mm -hmm. it, but because Mitch McConnell and Rob Portman and Richard Burr and all those people said and did nothing. They watched him talk about good people on both sides of a KKK rally. They, they saw him talk about grabbing women between the legs and they didn't withdraw their endorsements. They didn't refuse to go to the White House when they had legislation and common interests. They didn't refuse to endorse him for a second term. Most of them voted for him again. After he'd already been talking about a rigged election and was running for a second term that they knew was a calamity. What do we do about the epidemic of good people saying and doing nothing? Well, you know, the old Republican Party died, but what surfaced now is a you know new version of the Know Nothing Party, basically. And it has very strong emotional appeals to various segments of our society. And we can't, you know, overlook that or deny that, especially among especially among, unfortunately, white working class voters in this country and, and citizens in this country. To me, we are at this point. And, and, and I know Eddie and I've had conversations around this. We're at this precipice today that unlike where we've been in our country's history and think about it this way for 200 years, the American narrative was just was defined by one culture, right? For 200 over 200 years, it was defined by one culture. It left some people out, but it was basically definitional of America is defined in one culture. And that culture was white male, Christian, heterosexual, right? That was the, and those people that, that held that demographic held 95% of the power in our country for 200 years, right? And so what we're seeing today is Ron DeSantis represents this fear that is placed in a minority of America, a sizable minority, that that culture is gone, right? That that, that culture as the dominant culture of America is no longer exists. And what they're struggling with today is they think there needs to be culture linked with democracy. One culture linked with democracy. That's what they believe. They think the definition of America is that culture linked with democracy. And they don't have a vision that a democracy can exist with multi-cultures with many cultures, that where we respect the dignity of all, that we give freedom and equality of all. And that's the problem that they have. They do not think that America can be defined separate from that culture that was dominant over America for 200 years. And that appeals to fears in American society of loss of power and all of those sorts of things. And what I'm struck by as Ron DeSantis keeps making these moves after moves after moves, they appeal to fears. They come from a place of fear, but they're really a sign of weakness. If you really think mm -hmm. about it, they're re a real sign of weakness. He doesn't think that sharing knowledge in a diverse way, he he's opposed to sharing knowledge in a diverse way. Why? Because he, for some reason, thinks what he believes in isn't going to no longer be believed in, that people may be exposed to diverse viewpoints, may actually adopt diverse opinions on many things, including multi, the multiplicity of cultures in our country. And that's what I think is fascinating. It really is, people see, see Ron DeSantis as others like him as strong, but really they're incredibly weak. They're incredibly weak in that they don't, they have to put every block in, in place so that nobody can be exposed to any other diverse opinion. And I'll, one other thing, and I know I went on a little bit, the other thing that that sort of bugs me about this is that this is a person and this is a group of people that claim pro freedom, pro life and pro constitution. And that their decisions they've been made that have been made over the last few years have had nothing to do with freedom. They don't believe in freedom of thought. 
They don't believe in freedom of businesses to make decisions as what he did with Disney and other companies. They don't, they're not pro-life. They're not pro-life. He's the one that didn't want to do anything on COVID. He didn't care. He wanted to do nothing on COVID and he wants to do nothing on guns. So it's a party and a movement that was defined as pro-constitution, pro-life and pro-freedom. And they're none of those things, but it all comes down to that really at the basis of it is they know that the dominant culture of America no longer is the majority of America and they can't grapple with an America that is multicultural. Now tell me if Matthew Dowd's explanation wasn't like um, the perfect analysis of what's going on in the minds of those who just can't see themselves in a society where we are all equal, have all equal access to success. Think about what he said. They just can't fathom that they will be on an equal playing field as everyone else instead of giving a false leap ahead, instead of giving the ability to take off before everybody, instead of having the ability to have it all. It's amazing. They nailed it. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.